Hey, what's up, Elon Musk? Do you know who Sumeya Khayyat was? She was a 65-year-old woman who was murdered by being impaled with a spear through a specific part of her body that only a woman could be impaled through. She knew that her persecutors were going to do something as vile to her. She saw it coming a mile away. As for months prior, she had endured types of torture that will make Guantanamo look like Disneyland. The purpose of this torture was to have her utter one phrase and one phrase only, that she doesn't believe in God anymore. But she chose not to do that. Sumeya Khayyat is a well-known figure in Islam because by that choice, she became the first martyr in its history. I wish I could tell you that that was one isolated incident. I wouldn't wish that on anyone, but it is much of a one-off as a piece of misinformation on the internet nowadays. Throughout history, millions of people have died through similar, worse, and way worse methods, and all for the exact same reason. They refuse to renege their deeply entrenched belief in the existence of the creator, a voluntary instinct that no one forced upon them. Jews, Christians, and theist minorities and non-theist communities since the times of the pharaohs to this very day have chosen unimaginably horrific fates for themselves and their loved ones to not utter the denunciation of the most powerful idea to ever possess the hive mind of humanity since its inception. So for any human being to treat such an idea with this holier-than-thou ivory tower dismissiveness is insane. And yes, even if said human owned a car factory. Do you know what blew my mind about your tweet, Elon? It reminded me of a verse in the Quran that I always had a hard time wrapping my head around. It describes people in hell and it goes like this. And never will it benefit you on that day if you had wronged that you were all sharing in the punishment. I spent considerable time thinking what kind of psychopath could find comfort in knowing that others are also suffering. I'm burning in hell, but thank God my family and friends are burning too. Anyone familiar with the concept of hell wouldn't think it's better when it's shared. It's not happiness. And then I read your tweet and I thought, 1400 years ago, the Quran made that point that going to hell won't be like failing an exam, but so did all your friends, so you don't feel like such a loser. No, even that little bit of solace will be stripped away from people who deserve the ultimate punishment. Each inhabitant of hell will feel the full brunt of their personal failure and the constant torturing regret that they could have easily chosen not to be there and it would have cost them nothing except a split second of humility. To stop, to take a pause from typing, to think about the incomprehensible danger that they're in if the man on the other side of the tweet was right. The initial tweet didn't mention hell in any way. It was polite. It simply invited you to think that you might. The guy who was open-minded enough to consider the idea of UFOs, time travel, humanized robots, and super aliens who might be amongst us might also consider the possibility that the fundamental bedrock of every human civilization, every society, and every nation that ever existed might actually exist. A God might actually be out there. That humans might be more than purposely chemical scum as said by people who share your belief that some things matter in the final analysis, and that there's more to life than just us turning into fertilizer, that King David and Hitler didn't meet the exact same fate, that the Mary, the mother of Jesus, and Mary of England aren't sharing nothingness right now, and that your very existence isn't pointless. Here's an interesting fact. People who haven't properly received the message of God aren't automatically destined to hell. And that's what makes this message critically important to you, because now you've been informed. You've been made aware of the very real fact that God's word does exist on earth and you will be judged by him accordingly. Now, I'm not trying to win you over and I don't fancy seeing your face on the cover of Time with a title that reads, Elon Musk is now a Muslim thanks to Twitter. Quite on the contrary, I beg you to not even reply to this. Never like it heart it, share it, or otherwise let it be known that you know it exists. But I do, however, encourage you to do one thing. Before you go to sleep, use your phone and duck, duck, go the following information. There is no God but Allah. He created everything, and hellfire awaits those who deny his existence. Allah sent us a series of prophets and messengers, including Noah, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, and ending with Muhammad. 
They all came with one message. Believe in the one true God and obey him for the short period of time you remain on earth. Here's a final surprising point for you. You know these videos of people pronouncing their Islamic testimony in mosques while people hug them and everybody's emotional? They don't have to do that from a religious point of view. They just have more spare time than you do. And they probably don't know about Twitter. In Islam, you don't have to announce your belief. The creed's place is in the heart. And the heart is the thing that matters most in Islam. Because of all the things that $200 billion could fix when you get them wrong, losing your way between everlasting paradise and eternal hell is not one of them.